Are you in debt and don't know where to turn? We have answers. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Diane. We're talking about debt today, and with me are Laura Donaldson and John Cooney with Cooney Donaldson Attorney Firm, Law Firm, and they specialize in debt relief. Have you ever wondered, am I in debt over my ears or am I imagining it? Well, sometimes you don't know and you wait too long or then you can get into real trouble. So you guys are here to give us some advice and one of the first questions is, how do you know when to come? You specialize in debt relief for individuals and small businesses. How does one know whether to come and get some advice from you? Well, thank you for having us here. Uh, yes. Probably the best rule of thumb, I would say, is if you feel like you're over your head, you probably are. Okay. You know, and as soon as you start doing things like borrowing money for family or friends to pay your bills, uh, particularly if you're paying credit card bills and these sort of things, old medical bills, this is so the time that you need to come in and, and talk with somebody about what your options are, either under bankruptcy or, or un other non-bankruptcy options. And we are a, a bankruptcy firm and a, a debt settlement firm. We uh, specialize in that. We offer a no obligation to consultation for anybody who'd like to come in and talk about their so options. What you, so I think what people don't get is, is that you're here to help find solutions. When I think of going to a bankruptcy attorney, I think, uh-oh, I'm going to lose everything. I mean, this is, I have to wait till I'm at the end of the road. Am I at the end of the road yet? And then people wait too long, right? So um, what are the main causes that people would need to seek help? Or what are the main causes that they're in, you know, that create the debt besides spending too much money? Well, most of the time what we see is, especially in today's economy, we have a lot of folks with student loan debt. Yes. Um, we have people who come to us whose ages range anywhere from early 20s wow. up into their 80s. We've had 80-year-old um, folks who have co-signed for their children. Um, we have uh, parties whose children have moved in with them, adult children who are unemployed. Um, so unemployment causes mm -hmm. uh, great mm -hmm. financial strife, student loans, tax debt, people being served with distraint warrants from the Oregon Department of Revenue um, or IRS tax liens and they don't know how to get out of it. Self-employed people who are um, supposed to withhold payroll taxes and they just don't have enough money so they pay their payroll but retain the tax money and don't send it in to the government. All these things cause these issues to build and build and build and at some point people break and they don't know how do we wind up our business or do, can we continue our business? How do we restructure? And if I'm going, if my business is going under, is that implicate me as well? I mean, those are questions I think that a lot of people are how to start. It sounds like they need, a lot of the scenarios you explained, they could use help before they actually needed it to make good, better decisions perhaps? That's exactly right. The, the sooner the better. You know, if there's, if there's any indication that you're, gonna, that you're going down the wrong path or mm -hmm, going down the hill, mm -hmm. you need to call somebody and talk with them. Or if you just don't know. And if you don't know, because there's so much misinformation or disinformation mm -hmm, out mm -hmm. there. I mean, if you go on the internet and try to try to Google bankruptcy, and you're going to find all kinds of misinformation out there. So it's best to go talk with a professional. And what we really like to do, I mean, my, the, my favorite thing about my job as an attorney is is to sit down with somebody who comes into my office near tears, thinking that their their life is almost over. Yeah. And you know, they 90 percent of the time, if not 99 percent of the time, they walk out of my office with a smile on their face. The uh, uh, burden has been lifted. Well, it sounds like, I mean, you know, the word bankruptcy sounds like, I mean, there's so much shame attached to it. And, you know, is, is the whole world going to know my parents are going to just, you know, think I'm a horrible person or, you know, my, my children, I, I don't have a legacy. I mean, they, it's almost like it seems like the end of life, you know, the end of life as you know it. But you don't just take people through losing their assets or assist them in that way. You can actually help them protect 
right? Did I get that right? But That's I don't know correct. what that means. Um, so protecting assets means we have what are called exemptions in bankruptcy. So exemptions are the amount of equity you can retain in assets and still file a bankruptcy. If you have too much equity in your assets, we have pre-bankruptcy planning. And in that planning, we can counsel parties how to protect their assets. Mm, okay. So if they have large sums of money, for example, an IRA is a great investment where you can take money pre-bankruptcy, even if it doesn't feel right. Say a party has $5,000 on hand and we don't have any other exemption to apply to it, I can counsel them, put it in an IRA and we can protect it, put you through a bankruptcy and then you have that retirement money moving mm, forward okay. and we can do that with a number of assets but we have to know what assets folks have so we can protect it and we need to see folks early because oftentimes we see people after they've cashed Spent out down. their retirement mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. these things are protected in bankruptcy and i don't so. think people know the average person how would they know that and i they can wouldn't. see if you google it you're going to get too many an wrong answers for sure exactly right, right. Wow, okay. And, and we do have, uh, in, in Oregon particularly, and in Washington, great exemptions uh, that, that protect the, the, the vast majority of people that are uh, going to file a bankruptcy, most of their assets are going to be protected, most of their stuff, you know? And so w when the theory is, oh, if I go in, into bankruptcy, I'm going to lose everything, that's really one of the most unfounded fears that are out there. Because you th what we hear is, is that you, you lose your home. Right. Right. You lose your car. Right. Well, who's going to even think of doing that unless you're down to your last penny or something like and that? And that's where the, sorry, that's where the misinformation comes in because exemptions, for example, in Washington, there are certain rules that apply, but it's $125,000 there in, in equity, equity. So you can protect. You that you can keep. Yeah, that you can retain, retain. and file bankruptcy okay. and get rid of your creditors. Here in Oregon, it's smaller. It's 50000 for a married couple, 40000 for a single party. But you can see there's significant equity that you can retain in property and, and file. And this, this may be getting a little more in depth or, or too, too technical. technical, but really what we're distinguishing here is in, in a bankruptcy context is the difference between a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, which is a liquidation bankruptcy on one hand, and a Chapter 13, which is a reorganization on the other. And the Chapter 7 is where we're definitely you'd never get into a Chapter 7 bankruptcy without being very comfortable about what assets people have mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and what those values are. Mm -hmm. um, if it turns out that there are either a situation where pre-bankruptcy planning cannot protect those assets or um, it, it, there's just no way to protect those assets through a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, then we have a Chapter 13 as a reorganization. Okay. And you can use that um, as a method of, of protecting your assets and basically paying what you can um, over a period of time. So there's, there are different options. There are different options. Now, what if, let's take some scenarios, like what if a couple, husband's in business for himself, he's going to go out of business, it's not working, and he comes to you, is there, is the family unit, the, you know, the personal assets in danger as well of going away? Well, it depends on what he needs. So business, corporations, I should say, uh, don't receive a discharge in bankruptcy. So generally, it depends on the nature of the business that he holds, whether it's a corporation, an LLC, if he's a sole proprietor, all of that can make a difference. And oftentimes what we do is help him, if it's clear that the business cannot continue, mm -hmm. um, we'll help him wind up the business. And then if he has personal liability on any of the debt associated with the business, and we do that analysis as well, we can put him into a personal bankruptcy. And whether the mm -hmm. husband and wife have to file together, there's often times when the wife is not on, or the husband is not on the debt, and so there's no reason for that party to file. So oh. you can have a married couple okay. where only one party files and the other is not. And exactly. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So another question that I had was, um, what are the common things that, well, that, that people lose in a bankruptcy or, and what are the common things that they can retain? In other words, and what debt goes away and what doesn't? I okay, guess that's that, it. That, that, well, those are two pretty different questions, but we'll, we'll, we'll go Pick with- Pick the one with, that's <laughs> the most interesting to you. Okay. <laughs> uh, I would say that's that, that can or cannot go away. Um, 
are, are probably the most interesting okay. thing um, from, a, from a, an attorney's perspective. Right, right, right. Um, most debts are dischargeable in bankruptcy. Most unsecured debts are, dis are not, dis are, excuse me, are dischargeable in bankruptcy. What's an unsecured debt? Unsecured debts are credit cards, medical bills. There's no collateral that backs it like a, a home or a car. Those home loans and car loans are secured. Mm. So unsecured debts are those that, that have nothing that backs them. And these are things like, you know, like I said, uh, well, student loans, um, uh, credit cards, medical bills, pretty much any personal loan out there. Um, but those are but all I thought student loans don't go away. That's correct. Oh. So, so what we have in the bankruptcy code is, is sp it, it provides for a discharge of your debt, but it also has certain things that just don't go away through bankruptcy. And student loans are one of them. Okay. Um, taxes that are recent are, are uh, also not dischargeable. Um, However, in a Chapter 13 bankruptcy, it's the only place I know that you can go to the tax man and say, hey, here's the payment arrangement. If you don't like it, too bad. This is the way it's going to be. Oh. So you have quite a bit of power um, in, in negotiating. It sounds like that would be something that you, you should help navigate. Yes. Is that right? That's, that's I mean, I don't see. The, and, and the other thing is that people want to refinance their house. Um, they're in trouble and they want to refinance, but the banks, you know, it's hard to navigate the paperwork. and. I don't know why paperwork gets lost when you're trying to refinance a house. I've heard that. Oh, um, I, I, my, my clients, as, as part of people trying to keep their houses, and this is more of a non-bankruptcy, and that's, we don't just talk with our clients about bankruptcy. We talk with our clients about their bankruptcy options, their non-bankruptcy options, because banks are, bankruptcy really always, always should be the, the last, last resort. resort. Okay. Um, and so if we can avoid bankruptcy, that's what we advise our clients to do. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Most of the time, Really, we think of this as a cost-benefit analysis. Mm -hmm. What's the most cost-effective way of dealing with this problem? Okay. And, you know, me, and sometimes people want to pay a premium to avoid bankruptcy, and that's fine. And that usually is when we enter into the realm of debt settlements mm -hmm. and going uh, basically one by one to each creditor and settle them out at a discount. Okay. Um, it's quite a process to go through, but we do it, uh, assist for our clients doing that right. as well. Right. Well, okay. We do need to take a break, but we'll be right back to wrap up and talk about some really other important things that are so valuable to people because this is a serious subject and it's very emotionally driven. It is. So um, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. We're going to have a word from our sponsor. We're with uh, Cooney Donaldson, attorney at law, talking about what do you do when you're in debt? We'll be right back. Judson Roy is a full service interior design, staging, and furniture establishment. Located in the heart of Canby, Judson Roy is your complete decorating solution. Whether you're in need of furnishing a new home, updating your decor, or staging a house to sell, Judson Roy will assist you with their experienced sales and decorating staff. Be sure to look at their website, judsonroy.com. Welcome back to Inspired Conversations. I'm Diane, and we are here with Laura Donaldson and John Cooney with Cooney Donaldson uh, Attorney Firm, Law Firm. And we're talking about debt. So we were just talking about, you know, how to, what happens when you get this debt, and it seems like people would want to get negotiate with you rather than uh, go into bankruptcy and then... It, the, 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 the debt goes away and the creditors don't get their money. But you can help negotiate debt because I think as an average person, you know, I could call XYZ Bank or call my hospital and say, I want to uh, make a deal with you, you know, well, you know, and it, it's not as easy, but you, but you can do that. So it, we don't just come to you because we're ready to liquidate or bankrupt. Uh, we can also get some debt relief through your negotiations, right? That's right. Uh, in some instances it makes sense, in some instances it doesn't. I have folks that are on Social Security only, and Social Security folks are judgment proof, meaning if a creditor sues them, they can't take any money from them because their only source of income is Social Security. Okay. But for those folks, um, a lot of the times it's the calls. So they want to do something because it's continual calls and harassments for payment. So and it can be relentless, it can. and the stress level goes up to the point where people just feel sick. I mean, it's really bad. Right. But some of our clients don't want the stigma associated with bankruptcy. 
Um, they may not believe in it, may not believe it's right to stiff their creditors, as they say. Mm -hmm. So we'll negotiate with their creditors. And by negotiation, first I analyze whether they would qualify for bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. um, second, I ask them if they have any money uh, to negotiate these debts. Generally, the creditors, depending on how long the debt's been pending, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, will negotiate if they hear that the other side of it is the client may file bankruptcy. So that's another reason to come to you sooner than later. Yes. While there is still some money to work with. Right. Yes. Okay. Yep. And friends and family oftentimes will help. So if I have a client who has a credit card for $10,000 and no other debt, um, they may ask a family member for, say, half of it or 30% of it and Fat then we chance. start the negotiation. <laughs> and oftentimes that's what the creditor will tell me. They'll say, no way, mm -hmm. we, you know, we want our full payment mm -hmm. um, or wow. they can put some money down and we want the rest of it um, over 24 months and the interest rate is high and um, so difficult, I, difficult right, for the average person. Exactly. It's, it's, it's difficult, it's not impossible. I it mean, isn't. The, the, the hurdles are, number one, getting money together, number two, getting them to agree to a reasonable amount, mm -hmm. and then finally, if they do ultimately settle these debts out, uh, y there may be some tax ramifications. Mm -hmm. So again, this goes back to the cost-benefit analysis of, of what's the most cost-effective way of dealing with this financial Well, problem. I think people also are afraid, and this could be a catch-22, they're afraid that their credit rating is going to be ruined forever, but then if they wait too long, it is damaged. So is there a rule of thumb around that, or just come in for advice if you have any concerns? Come in for advice. Uh, you know, if you're worried about your credit and you can't pay your bills, then don't worry about your credit because it's going to be bad. Okay. You know, you're going to lose your credit. But and and filing a bankruptcy does damage your credit, but it's not the end of the world. I have clients that have come out of bankruptcy. It seems like the underwriters change the rules every day, but you know, three four years out of bankruptcy, they're able to qualify for traditional fi fi uh, financing for a home loan. I mean. Bankruptcy is there for a fresh start. It's not mm. the end of the world. Mm -hmm. It's actually mm -hmm. a new beginning. There mm. are other options though too. So there are counseling services mm -hmm. in the Portland area and what they'll do is they look at your debt and say you only have a couple of credit cards, they will actually negotiate the interest rate. They will take a small fee on the payments that they make, but mm -hmm. they'll negotiate interest rate, your cards will be cut off, but then you end up paying the full debt over a five year period of time, that I believe is the max. Um, but then on your credit report, it shows us paying as agreed, settled as agreed. So that's actually keeping you out of bankruptcy, but you have to have the ability to make that payment. So when we mm -hmm, look at mm -hmm. it, if that's an option that I speak with someone about, it's generally because they don't have a whole lot of debt, but it's just enough that it's not manageable. And if we look at reducing the interest rate, maybe the payment would be smaller ah, so that they can pay it in okay. full. Now, the only problem with that is that when we set up those programs mm -hmm. through those companies, if a person misses a payment mm -hmm. in the program, they can be kicked out of the program and have to start again. Oh. There's also programs like that that are on the web and they um, are not the most um, upfront and upright programs and they so scam a, a lot of So getting a list from you would be very valuable as opposed to people trying to find on their own. And yeah, you can't, I, that's pretty dangerous. And there's only a couple that we actually trust and one that's locally. Um, and again, the, the, the flip side of that is if you get kicked out of the program and you have to start again, you can get the same, if you weren't adverse to a bankruptcy filing, you could get the same result in a chapter 13 where you set up a payment uh. plan over time and if you miss a payment, they're less harsh and you can continue, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. restructure, and stay in the program. And in Chapter 13, you don't always pay 100% of your debt. In fact, most of the time you don't. Uh, it's based on your ability to pay. Okay. So people um, think, I need to seek counsel. They're watching the show and they go, yeah, I'm struggling and I'm just, you know, I can't put my head in the sand anymore. I have to do something. But how can I afford to go to a lawyer when 
you know, I don't, I'm in trouble financially. So how do you get your money or how do well, they come up with the you know, money? We, we offer, as I said earlier, I believe, a, a no obligation consultation. Right, right. And, and so it's no cost to come in and at least learn what, what the roadmap is out there and what your options are. Um, it, once it comes down to if, the, if a client decides they're going to retain us and file a bankruptcy, I mean, it really depends on what's, what this situation is. Everybody's individual. Sometimes they've been making their credit card payments. Well, I'm going to say, if you're going to file a bankruptcy, stop paying your credit cards and make that monthly payment to me for a couple months. Mm. You know, other times, you know, loans for family or friends. I have clients that will just pay as they can uh, until the fees are paid, mm -hmm. and then we file a case for them. Mm -hmm. um, there are other situations sometimes where, particularly if a, a client, I've had a client who was garnished, um, so somebody had sued them and got a judgment and they were garnishing their wages, they were taking 25% um, of the net wage. Uh, my client filed bankruptcy and we were actually able to, um, I, I had him pay just a minimal fee up front, um, but had him uh, let me go and go after that creditor that was suing or was garnishing him and I was able to take back that money from them and use that to be applied for Wow, for okay, so, so this is a valuable service, you know, I mean, because people, the average person can't do this themselves. Right. Now, a lot of people think, am I gonna go to jail? I mean, is that a valid question? Can you go to jail? I, I hear that question quite often. And, and you know, I've had one, one client that uh, got a warrant out for his arrest um, related to credit card debt. You know, and, and the question is really a little more nuanced. Can I go to jail for not paying a debt? It really kind of depends on, on what the debt is. If you're, if you're not paying your court fines and these sort of things, you're gonna go to jail, right? You know, those sort of things can lead to jail time. But generally speaking, if you're not paying your credit cards or medical bills, these are not ways that are reasons that people are gonna go to jail. People are afraid that, that, that because they're not living up to their obligations mm -hmm. that they may go to jail. I've had one client um, who had a warrant issued for his arrest for not paying a credit card. And it wasn't because he, let me correct myself, it wasn't because he didn't pay his credit card. It's because the creditor has sued him, obtained a judgment. The, the judgment creditor was entitled to do an examination of, of my client to see what kind of assets he had. So the court ordered him to appear to do that. My client didn't appear, so um, oh. the bench warrant was issued for it's his arrest. So but what about IRS debt? Can you go to jail for IRS debt? Well, it depends on the situation. If you're convicted of, uh, if there's a criminal offense, like for... a oh, white-collar uh, crime. Right. Uh, if, you know, Whatever that evasion, is. fraud, or evasion, then yes. Oh, the, the, the okay. Criminal sanctions for that. Oh, okay. But, but bankru bankruptcy can discharge taxes, and many people don't don't realize this, but taxes, uh, in fact, I, I use bankruptcy as a method to deal with taxes all the time for, for my clients that, that have problems with their taxes. Um, the general rule is that the tax has to be at least three years old, has to be filed for at least, the tax return has to be filed for at least two years. Uh, no assessment of the tax within 240 days. That usually happens when the, when the tax return is filed. Uh, and then no fraud or evasion. And so uh, with our clients that, that have these tax problems, we, we pull tax transcripts. Uh, we can review those and determine whether and when those taxes are dischargeable and, and move forward um, on that basis. Okay, wow. Well, this has been valuable information and I hope you know a lot of people uh, can use this and make sure that they do come and visit uh, someone like you or to visit you. Uh, before it is too late, because it sounds like that's a critical, th the time frame is critical. Pre-bankruptcy planning is. is everything, everything. So my biggest thing to all of your viewers, my, my biggest statement that I can make is do not dip into your retirement okay. for any reason before you speak with a lawyer because we can protect it and it's so essential that you have that money going into the future. We don't know what's gonna happen with Social Security. We don't know what's gonna happen with all of our benefit programs and that money is protected. So number one foremost thing is to protect your retirement. Okay. The, the number two is that you wanna protect your home or your family and if you want to protect your family, it should be family first, retirement second. But right, the, you, you, it you works want to protect together. your family, and and the bankruptcy code understands that when people are in financial trouble, they want to take care of their family members mm -hmm. first. And what does that, that mean? You mean keep their well, home? Or? Well, well, the, well, no payment. You know, so if you owe 
Bank of America, you know, ten thousand dollars, and you owe your your mom ten thousand dollars. Who would you rather pay? Your mom, right? Mm -hmm. So that's considered a preference, and the bankruptcy code doesn't like that. They like it so that everybody who's similarly situated is treated equal. So if you repay a family member before, before bankruptcy, oh, I got you now. The, the trustee can then go okay. and take that money back from the family member and redistribute among creditors. So it's a terrible, terrible way to get your family oh, members caught up in a bankruptcy. I so see. There's another reason why to come in early so that we can do this planning mm -hmm. and, make, and tell you what not to do. Okay. So. Very good. Very good. Very good. Thank you so much for coming up. My Thank you for wheels are turning. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Absolutely. So thank you for joining us on Inspired Conversations. Until next time, take care.